हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर अमरजीत कौर आई एम प्रोफेसर ऑफ अकाउंटिंग एंड बिजनेस कम्युनिकेशन एट द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट गुरुग्राम यूनिवर्सिटी गुरुग्राम आई एम ऑथर ऑफ टेन बुक्स एंड फिफ्टी एट रिसर्च पेपर्स दिस इज माई प्रिवलेज दैट आई एम हेयर विथ यू टू डिस्कस ऑन नेगोशिएशन थियोरीज सो नेगोशिएशन थियोरीज एज द नेम सुजेस्ट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस various theories pertaining to the area of negotiation negotiation have been discussed in the last two uh, lectures as well and we have found that negotiation is uh, you know at most important in any business in anybody's personal life as well irrespective of a business you know what kind of business it is what kind of uh, uh, you know location it is situated at negotiation comes in you know an employee may negotiate with the owner uh, unions may uh, negotiate with the owners suppliers may negotiate buyers may negotiate you know so negotiation is part and the parcel of any business so we are discussing this negotiation in you know as a part of business communication and today we are going to talk about theories right so negotiation theories so what is the background to the negotiation theory so negotiation are a vehicle of communication and stakeholders management not only in business negotiation processes are critical for policy making in democratic societies as well so friends uh, you know this negotiation is kind of uh, you know instrumental uh, for managing stakeholders now we know there are so many stakeholders in any business it could be shareholders directors bankers creditors you know debtors they all are stakeholders in a business suppliers buyers employees of course they are there so this negotiation works as a instrument as a vehicle to communicate with the different stakeholders who are involved in business because everybody wants the best you know of their interest and uh, this negotiation is not only required for the businesses you know we just referred about businesses even in political life even in uh, you know nas- in, in any national uh, uh, you know policy as a part of national policy negotiations are required a country need to negotiate with the neighboring country with other countries about various critical points you know it could be for emissions it could be from loan requirement debt requirement visa recently we have uh, you know seen how one particular country was banned you know for issuing visa so that that has happened just last few weeks only so even that is a neg- and thereafter they opened last week only so which was actually negotiation so negotiation process so the point i am making is this the negotiations are important not only for individuals or businesses but for policy makers as well for democratic societies as well for nations for states as well okay so what is the negotiation theory negotiation theory proposes that one should focus on interest not positions while negotiating keep inventing separate from committing do invest heavily in what if questions uh, do insist on objective criteria and try to build nearly self enforcing agreements so uh, we will get into more details of negotiation theories but just to begin the negotiation theory it proposes it says it you know it uh, uh, kind of uh, you know favors that while in negotiation one should never be uh, you know thinking or focusing on what kind of position one has or has to maintain or has to keep for negotiation the focus should be the interest what is my interest i am negotiating for my company for my product for my department for my country for my state so what is the interest area which i want to negotiate for so my focus always should be on interest that's what the negotiation theory says and this focus keeps on changing from different uh, perspectives for different situation and the negotiation theory further says that the negotiate always should keep inventing uh, separate from the committing right so when i am saying the inventing as a negotiator i am trying to find out 
more details. I am curious by questioning, by listening carefully, by reading face. I am trying to invent what is, uh, what is the point of agreement for the other party. What is that the other party will certainly demand for or requires for, right? And it does not mean when you are trying to find out, it does not mean that you are committing for that. You are trying to understand. So, negotiation theory always, uh, you know, doctors, that doctrines that inventing and committing are two different things. And uh, one must, uh, you know, invest time, energy in asking what if, what if we give this to them? What if we do not you know, uh, consider their demand, the other party's demand? What if we consider only one request like that? So, uh, we have to invest a lot in this what if question and as per the theory, uh, you know this theory suggests that the, uh, we should insist on the objective criteria, you know we will negotiate objectively, so not subjectively, there, sh there is a framework, there should be a framework, we should be known to both the parties and that really helps and the last, last point in negotiation theory is that we should build nearly self-enforcing agreements. So, okay, the first stage we will discuss this, then we will come up with the, with the you know, uh, with answers to these questions in the next phase on, on 20th of this month. Then on 30th, we will meet up and we will present about the more details, you know, of any, any point related to the agreement like that. So, it is a self-enforcing agreement which is inbuilt. So, this is what the negotiation theory says. Further, negotiation theories uh, may be perspective, descriptive or normative in nature. Negotiation theories are diverse and frequently highlight features that reflect salient concern from the perspective of disciplines from which they came from. So, negotiation theories uh, could be, uh, you know, in some perspective in the perspective of economics, in the perspective of behavior, in the perspective of integrity, you know, like that. They could be descriptive, you know, they are def describing the nature, how one will be conducting in, in such theory and it could be normative as well. And negotiation theories are very diverse and they generally highlight the features and those features are based on the discipline they are coming from, the area, you know. If the theory been developed and came up from economics area or from psychology area or from business area or from organizational, you know, OB area. So, this is how negotiation theory have different features and those features will depend upon where uh, are they coming from, what is the original discipline of the negotiation theory we are talking about. Further, uh, theorists differ in question of how to categorize the main school of thought in negotiation? Daniel Druckmann 1997 describes the main school of thought in negotiation theory as corresponding to four approaches to negotiation. So, uh, as we said, the negotiation theory come from different disciplines. So, so, the perspective of that discipline shows up, comes up in the theory. So, those theorists who develop those th negotiation theory, uh, they, they actually have a different opinion on the question that how to categorize main school of thought in negotiation. You know, the main school of thought, there are many schools of thought. We are going to discuss in, no, in detail about all the schools of thought very soon. But uh, there is no consensus amongst th uh, theorists about that what and where to categorize those thoughts, right? And the Daniel Druckmann in 1997, he said that there are main schools of thought in negotiation theory and they are and they are actually corresponding to four approaches of negotiation. So, uh, we are going to discuss four approaches which were actually talked by Daniel Druckmann in 1997. So, these are the four approaches towards negotiation theories. Number one, negotiation as puzzle solving. Number two, negotiation as bargaining game. Uh, number three, negotiation as organizational management. And number four, negotiation as diplomatic politics. So, these are the four approaches which have been uh, actually linked by Druckmann 
with the negotiation theories. The first negotiation uh, theory here the approach is that negotiation is like solving a puzzle that we uh, you know understand one aspect of let, let's say pricing expectation of the other party. Then we solve about the product description, then we solve about the delivery period, then we solve about and you know further more question. If two countries are negotiating, so they will take it as less and un let us understand this aspect first, then they will move to the next one. So, it is like puzzle solving, you know one question leading to the another question and giving answer to the next question like that. So, this is an approach in, in, in one of the negotiation theory. The other approach in negotiation is that it is like a game that we are bargaining. Game is always like winning or losing, right? All, everybody wants to win in the game. So, it becomes like we are bargaining so that we get maximum in the game. So, it is taken as a game uh, as, as two negotiators are playing uh, to safeguard or to have maximum interest being saved, bargain rather and that is what the second approach is. The third approach is the negotiation is taken as management of the organization. You know there are people, there are who are employees, there are people who are laborers, there are people who are investors, there are people who are debtors, bankers, you know government agencies, they, are, they all are part of the organization, right. So, here uh, it has been taken uh, in this approach that negotiation is been done to manage the whole show, right, different stakeholders of an organization. So, this approach is of the management approach that it is been taken as managing the organization. And the last is taken as it is a diplomatic politics. So, here this kind of approach is generally being taken in international relations by one country to the another country, by one state to the another state and especially if the states are being ruled by different uh, political parties. So, this approach is taken as diplomatic. This can be taken in uh, strategy as well as, as a part of business as well. But so here the negotiations are approached in a diplomatic manner to so that we maintain the relationship and we also gain a lot whatever. So, both the tri parties try tries to you know gain maximum, but by keeping a diplomatic approach they do not come straight, they do not show up their interests so straight. So, these are the four approaches. Uh, now, we will be discussing about certain terms which are used in negotiation and thereafter we will be discussing two uh, groups of negotiation theories, right. So, the first term which is used is a strategy, it is a careful plan or method especially for achieving an end and tactics, it refers to skill of uh, using available means. So, we have been using strategy and tactics in our day to day life. We all know what strategy is, we all know what tactics are. So, strategy basically is a plan, long term plan is a method to which is used to achieve any end, any goal, long term goal, any short term goal, right. So, short term strategy is long term strategy. So, basically it is a tool, it is a method to achieve ends and results and the tactics are the skills which are used to achieve those uh, you know goals uh, by using or available means, available resources. So, whatever a tactic one may design you know in the negotiation will depend upon the resources available to him or her, right. So, here resources play in deciding the tactic for anything, the resources play a role. So, so the skill which is used by negotiators in you know in the context of negotiation the tactics become the skill. Moving forward, another terms uh, which we use in negotiation are BATNA, best alternative to negotiating uh, agreement, VATNA, worst uh, alternative to a negotiative agreement. This was given by Fisher and Yuri. And the third is ZOPA, zone of possible agreement. So, these are the three important terms which are really, really used in any commercial uh, uh, you know setup in any uh, business environment. So, BATNA as the name suggests best alternative to a negotiative agreement. So, it says what would be the you know best possible outcome if two parties are negotiating right what is the best possible outcome for one party. So, best alternative to a negotiated 
agreement. This is called as Bhatna, the short term. The second is Vatna, the worst alternative. So, what will happen if you know I get the worst outcome in the negotiation process? So, we call it as Vatna. So, what is my worst expected outcome? What is my best expected outcome? So, Bhatna and Vatna. So, they are opposite to each other. So, but everybody wants Bhatna, right? Everybody wants best alternative uh, during the process. So, nobody would target for Vatna. But as we all uh, know that in negotiation analysis is very important. So, one should actually prepare well in advance and should come up uh, you know with a clear thought in mind on the table of discussion that this would be, this could be my worst outcome out of negotiation and this could be my best outcome. So, this is, this is something which should be known to to the negotiators by analyzing the situation resources means in advance and certainly one should know the zopa or at least if not exactly the zopa the scale of zopa the range of zopa zopa is zone of possible agreement that what what is the possible uh, you know zone the area where we can come to an agreement that the other party will agree you know, something between this to this and the other party will also be making an idea that the other party would be agreeing to this zone, right? So, we call it as ZOPA. So, these are the terms and these were the, you know, approaches in negotiation theories. Now, we are going to talk about negotiation theories. After all this background, let us discuss about negotiation theories. So, types of negotiation theories, number one, distributive negotiation and number two, integrative negotiation. So, we shall be discussing uh, these two theories in detail. Uh, number one, distributive negotiation. Distributive negotiation is a theory or a form of negotiation in which the involved parties give each other offers and counter offers in sharing a resource in discussion. A basic nature of human as we all know the individual involved in negotiation, they want the best offer that favors them. And this is also referred to as distributive bargaining. So, this was the crux of uh, distributive negotiation theory. So, this theory actually evolves around that uh, they, both the negotiations are trying to distribute uh, you know, whatever the resource is available. So, the pi size is fixed. So, this is the pi size. This, so, both the negotiators are trying to divide the same available pie right? and the both want the maximum part of it, right. So, they give offer to the other party and then they count and the other party gives counter offer and this keeps on going. So, there is a bargaining going on because both the parties they want the best offer for them which favors them, right. So, so individuals who are involved in the negotiation they are just concerned about their interest, their, their interest of grabbing the maximum part of the pie. Pie here I am using as a metaphor. Further, the distributive uh, strategies also known as zero sum, competitive or win low strategies. Uh, they are based on the competitive view of negotiation. They are designed to secure the biggest slice possible of the proverbial pie for one side the claiming value while leaving the other side with the smallest pie possible. So, this is what exactly I just discussed. So, distributive strategies are they are known as zero sum. I want a zero sum. So, I want to you know it is competitive. So, either I win this what I am targeting or I lose right. We are not trying to increase the size of the pie. We are just trying to grab the maximum part of the Pi. So, so, both the negotiator or the people who are practicing distributive negotiation, they are basically trying to you know get maximum pi by uh, you know having an approach of win or lose. So, this is a competitive uh, you know comp uh, competitive uh, you know way of negotiating. So, I am competing with you to get the maximum part of the pi. That is the approach. Further, the distribution uh, negotiation the tactics which are used in distributive bargaining are mostly intended to help those who use them to come uh, claim value for their company while defending against the efforts of opponent party to do the same. 
so by concern uh, by open strong by salami tactics so so three things coercion opening strong and salami tactics so what they are so to understand this distributive negotiation further so whatever the tactics which are used in this uh, theory so they are used to distribute uh, the, the the share the pie available and the focus is more and more bargaining to bargain is not that somebody just playing no coercion is used that's force right force is used one may try to open very strong like one is trying to exhibit that you, uh, that i am the only supplier i am the only buyer yeah uh, trying to make other party feel that you know uh, we are stronger than you we have more resources you cannot compete with us something like that you know so either some force is used or some you know opening is made very strong that other party doesn't uh, you know get into a position to bargain well and slummy tactics slummy is you know small small pa- parts are chopped right so slummy tactics are used uh, which where is basically we are trying to remove the benefits gradually slowly in in parts so but but the whole purpose is to have the maximum part of the you know the the value which has been claimed in the discussion you know both the parties are basically claiming some value they are claiming for the company they are claiming for themselves they are trying to defend uh, you know the maximum claim for their own uh, party or their own industry or for their own business for that matter right so these are the uh, distributive negotiation tactics let's take some example of uh, how to reach uh, to point of agreement in distributive negotiation so zopa in distributive negotiations imagine a local pulse processor and its main pulse supplier are negotiating a new 3 years contract through the processor uh, may uh, though the processor may hope to pay less he knows that the purchase would still be worth his while at a price of up to 500 usd a ton in this example 500 usd ton is the processor's reservation point right now imagine that the supplier knows that the she would be willing to sell his stock of raw uh, pulses to the processors for a minimum of 400 usd per ton this amount is the reservation price of the seller because for less than this amount the seller will not make a deal so zopa is 400 to 500 usd so let's understand this case scenario i am using this small case let to help you understand that how two parties will get into a point of agreement right by having a distributive negotiation approach so friends purpose of negotiation is to reach to some agreement to consensus so that the deal is finalized right so any negotiation is intending to be reaching out to some conclusion so in this case what is the uh, situation that two uh, you know one is the local pulse processor and uh, his his supplier for and his his main supplier are negotiating uh, for a contract so pulse processor and with somebody else who are, who is actually supplier so x and y so x is a processor let's assume and y is a supplier of the pulses so uh, so x is trying to buy pulse from y right and they want to get into a contract for 3 years so that uh, whatever the price they negotiate at and agreed uh, you know get into contract the same at the same value the the supplier will be supplying pulses to the processor right so though the processor he of course wants to pay less everybody wants to pay less because it's a distributive approach but he knows that the purchase would still be good for him if he is able uh, to you know get it at 500 usd per ton right so he knows in his heart that somewhere that even 500 usd ton is not bad to pay for this pul- these pulses and especially for the future for the next 3 years right so uh, this is the 500 would be taken will be known as processor's reservation point so he is reserved in his mind 
that I will not pay more than 500 or this deal or these pulses, the quality of pulses the supplier is going to supply me does not worth more than 500 per ton, right. And this uh, buyer, the supplier, so he is also uh, wants something, you know, maximum for him. So, and but in his heart, he knows that I can sell at any price, but not less than 400 per ton. So, it means 400 is the reservation point for the seller, the supplier. So, buyer knows his reservation point, seller knows. So, if there is a good negotiation, good listening, good observation about each other, so, the, the zone of, uh, you know, agreement where the both agrees would be somewhere 400 to 500 dollars in bid. So, any bid, so either of the two will be closer to 400 or 500 or it could be middle of the, the two, 450. So, any price will strike between these two values that is the zone, 400 to 500 USD per ton is the zone. So, that is what the ZOPA is. So, that is how one, uh, you know, during the negotiation, which we are distributive uh, negotiation is approached, ZOPA is arrived. Now, we shall be talking about the second category of uh, negotiation theory, which is integrative negotiation. Integrative negotiation is also known as integrative bargaining, win-win bargaining or interest-based bargaining. This is a negotiation approach in which the involved parties work together to find a solution that satisfies the needs and concerns of each. So, this is the second category or second type of negotiation theories. As the name suggests, nego integrative. So, here the approach is to increase the size of the pie so that both the parties are in win-win situation. So, both the, tries, uh, both the parties are trying to safeguard the interest of the other party, right? This is a very good and healthy way of bargaining and negotiating. So, that is why we call it as integrative uh, or principled negotiation even. And this approach involves working together. So, working together to find a solution rather than of being feeling a challenge or from other each other or threatened from each other or you know competitive with each other. This approach is to find solutions of the problem so that the needs of both the parties are satisfied and the size of the pie gets bigger. So, this approach is the best approach as we all know, but it is not necessary that one should be using integrative or, or, uh, or the distributive all the time. Everyone who is a good negotiator knows when to use which one, which situation to use, uh, you know, either, either the distributive one or integrative one. So, friends, with this, I would like to wind up and I hope you have learnt well about two important types of or the categories of uh, negotiation theories, which is uh, distributive and integrative. With this, I would like to sign off. Thank you.